Thanks for interrupting. Julio. <laughs> Moving on. Our objectives are to understand the factors that affect solubility, read and interpret a solubility curve, and calculate the solubility of a solute at a given temperature and amount of solvent. And we'll also determine if a solution is unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. So, solubility. Solubility is how much of a solute one can dissolve in an amount of solvent. Now, solute and solvent are terms you may have heard before. So, the solute is the substance that is dissolving. And the solvent is the liquid in which the solid dissolves. So if you're talking about something like salt water, salt would be the sol uh, solute, and water is the solvent. This water is dissolving the salt. Same thing with sugar. If you add sugar into your coffee, the coffee is the solvent, and the sugar is the solute. Okay? Make sense? So those are a couple terms uh, that we'll be using here. Also, a solute can be a gas as well. Uh, you guys may have talked about this in biology. Um, there's oxygen that's dissolved in water. That's how fish and uh, aquatic organisms breathe. They breathe dissolved oxygen. So a gas can be a solute as well. Moving forward, solubility depends on these different things. Oh, no. All right, solubility depends on a couple different things. So first off is the substance. You'll notice that different substances have different solubilities. The substance is indicated by the formula on here. Um, also the temperature. The temperature depends on how soluble something is. Why do you guys think that, uh, that this graph only goes from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 Celsius? Why do you think? Any ideas? What, do, what happens to water at 100 Celsius? It uh, boils. What happens to water at 0 Celsius? It's frozen. So we're talking about liquid water. Specifically, um, 100 grams of water this graph refers to. So also, how much solvent is present? So this graph is for every 100 grams of water. So pay attention to that. Um, water is like an empty classroom with all empty desks. And the solubility relates to how many students can fit in that classroom. So if you have a bigger classroom, oops, right, a huge lecture hall can hold a lot more students. If I have a bigger, if I have more solvent, I can hold more solute. If I have a small amount of solute, a uh, so, small amount of solvent, I can't hold as many students. So if you have more water, you can hold more salt. Yep. If you, the more water you have, the more salt you'll be able to dissolve in there. So if you think about it, if you just have a drop of water, can you dissolve a large pile of salt? Nope. No. So why there's so much salt in the ocean? There's the re water. the reason, well, because there's nowhere near the saturation point of salt. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay? Um, so a small classroom can only fit a certain amount of students. Big classroom, lots of students. Um, so we take a look at this. This is a solubility graph. So let's say the vertical axis represents how many grams of solute can be dissolved per 100 grams of water. Now you have to pay attention to this amount of water per 100 grams of water. Because sometimes these graphs are a little different. Sometimes it might be 10. It might be 40 or 50. Sometimes it's 50. It's never 40. Sometimes it might be a kilogram or a thousand grams of water. Each substance has its own line. So you have to pay attention to the substance. As well as the temperature. A lot of things change solubility with temperature. 
Now, you can look at here, so, uh, actually salt doesn't change the solubility that much across the temperature, but look at how much potassium nitrate changes. There's about, you can fit about 100 times as much uh, solute in at 90 degrees as you can at uh, 10 degrees. So you can fit 200 grams at 90 degrees, but only 20 grams at, at 10 degrees. So it can vary greatly. All right. So let's take a look at um, interpreting this graph. So the solubility of KNO3 at 40 degrees Celsius. So first thing we look at is our substance. We're talking about KNO3 here at 40 degrees Celsius. So what you do is you have this point right here at this graph. 40 degrees Celsius. You look over here. And we can fit 60 grams of KNO3 for every 100 grams of water. So we're on the KNO3 line at specifically this point, 40 degrees Celsius. You, you interpret that. It's sort of it's just like uh, interpreting a a math uh, a math graph, graph and math. Except you have to pay attention to what they mean. We're not just talking about axes that are arbitrary. We're talking about actual uh, meaning to those axes. And the meaning of this axis is that per 100 grams of water, I can dissolve 60 grams of water. So I want you, um, what about 200 grams of water? If I can fit 60 grams of KNO3 for, two, uh, for 100 grams of water, how many would I be able to fit in 200 grams of water? In other words, if I can hold 60 students in 100 grams of water, how many could I hold in 200 grams of water? 120. It doubles. How many could I hold in 50 grams of water? 30. So I want you guys to see if you guys can do this and figure out the solubility of KNO3 in 10 grams of water at uh, 70 degrees Celsius. Take, take a quick second and try to figure this one out, guys. Alright, so first off, when you're talking about this, what substance are we referring to? Talking about KCl. So we're referring to this green line on this graph. What's our temperature we're talking about? 70 degrees Celsius. We're right here. 70 degrees Celsius. So this is my point right here. So my point right here is represented about here. So I take and I extrapolate. What do you guys think that is? 40, let's say 47 or 48. So this is 48 grams of KCl for every 100 grams of water. Yeah, you know, for every 100. Look, read the access. For 100 grams of water. How many grams of water are we talking about? We're talking about 10 grams of water. So how many grams of KCl dissolve? Quick, think about it. 100 grams, we have 48. How many have we 100. Yeah, don't you want to just multiply 48 times 10? Nope. We have 48 grams of KCl for every 100 grams of water. Right? But how many grams? That's a, that's a decimal. Yeah. So that's, for every 1 gram of water, there's 0.48 grams of KCl, right? So, how many for 10 grams of water? 10 grams of water. Wait, why would you do that? Because that's what it says. I'm talking about 10 grams of water. Yeah. So we're doing 10 grams of water times so 48 divided by 100. Yep. Let me get my calculator out. You don't have to do that. What's, Is it 480? It's 4.8. Yeah, we can't do mental math on that. Uh-oh. Oh, come on. Oh. 952, Augustine. Nine minutes. Sorry. So this is four point eight grams. What's going on doing that? You're pressing next. Oh. Four point eight. Do you guys see where we got that? Yeah. Okay. Moving on. 
I want you guys to try this example, and we'll go over it as a class. So let's talk about this. So what substance are we talking about here? KNO3. So we're talking about this line right here, the KNO3 line. What's our temperature? 20. 20 degrees Celsius. So we're talking about 20 degrees Celsius. Now KNO3 intersects 20 about right here. So about 30, maybe a little more, maybe 31. Let's say for easy, easy math, let's say 30 grams of KCl for how many grams of water? 100. Per 100 grams of water. That's what the access says. Well, times 10. So how many grams of water do we have? We have 500 grams of water. Times get times 500? Yep. So this is our solubility multiplied by how much water we have. Okay? That's it. Or you can just say, say something like, well, for 100 grams, it's 30. 30 grams of KCl. Five time, I, have that, I have five times as much water. So it's just five times 30. So it's 150 grams. Oh, it's, K, it's a KNO3, sorry. KNO3 will dissolve. There. Let's recap what we did. We're going to get it. We have these two things. We look at the substance and the temperature. So we get the correct line, the correct temperature. Then we get this, this right here. Let me use a different color. So then we get this point. This point comes from this graph. But you don't even use the point. At 20, yeah, we use 20 right here. To, to, that equation, you know. Nope, it's, the temperature is not part of the equation. The temperature and the substance are just there to, to find the correct point in the graph. Oh. Okay? Yeah, I think 20 has something to do everything. Nope, it doesn't have anything to do with the math, just the temperature. That's part of the graph reading. All right. Uh, one thing. Um, there's degrees of saturation. Yes, write this down. Now, what we just talked about is the solubility. Now, that is the maximum amount that you can put in a solution, put in a water, and it will dissolve. After that point, if you add it, add more to water, it won't dissolve. So there's degrees of how much there is in between. So what we, we call something unsaturated if the solution has less than the solubility. So if my solubility in the last one was 150 grams, but I only added 100 grams, I could fit more. That means it's unsaturated, more solute, more KNO3. I could put more and it would dissolve. So it's almost like if we had, like our classroom right now, we could fit more students in this classroom because we have empty desks, right? So that means our class is unsaturated. Uh, saturated means that we have equal amount as our solubility. So as if we did one of two things, we could... I uh, have every desk full, or if we remove the empty desks, then we'd have a saturated classroom. We wouldn't be able to hold any more students. Now, supersaturated is interesting situation, and you it doesn't come up too much, but it's actually if the solution has more than the solubility. So, in my last one, if I had a hundred, if I had two hundred grams of water dissolved, a uh, two hundred grams of KNO three dissolved and my solubility was 150 grams. That would be super saturated. The only way that happens is if we cool an already saturated solution because of that property, that solubility depends on temperature. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the last slide for a second. So like if you cool down a solution uh, that's already saturated, so you have your solubility and you decrease the temperature, You'd, and you'd still have, um, you'd have more solute than the solution can hold. So it would be like if we were here with a full uh, class and we took away some desks from students. The people would have to stand. We'd be over capacity. All right? So um, 
solubility, remember, solubility represents how much can dissolve. It's the maximum amount. And I have classrooms here to, uh, to represent that. So this classroom would be saturated because every student is there. Right? Every, every desk has a student in it. This classroom down here is like our classroom. We're all dressed in uniforms and we're wearing ties. No, I'm just kidding. So there's some empty desks up here. So the empty desks indicate that we can hold more. We're unsaturated. Now this classroom down here, there's people sitting on the floor. They either had their desks taken away. That would be super saturated. All right? All right, so um, problem solving. This is how to solve problems with this. Write this down. Go. So what you want to do when you're, when you're uh, problem solving this, you want to find the correct line. You want to make sure you're using this correct formula. Then we want to calculate the solubility at the temperature. Remember the axis. Remember it's normally per 100 grams of water. And then we're going to compare our conditions with the solubility. That's it. Um, so try these two. How do you know? What are you, my mom? <laughs>